It's Rand Delicious. Welcome to the SEO Rant. I am your host, Gordy Overton. And you might know me better as Wix's head of SEO brand, but I'll remind you, this is pure unofficial Morty Magic and Morty Mania. For official Morty Magic and on the Mania side, check out Wix's SERPs Up podcast over at Wix.com slash SEO slash learn slash podcast. If you've got all those slashes, you're a genius. If not, I'll try to link to it in the show note. I usually forget because I'm terrible at this stuff. Um, where can you find the SEO rant? You found it. Congratulations, Mazel Tov. Uh, if you're looking for it, you're, you're sitting in your friend's car, they're playing the SEO rant at the gym on the loudspeaker, then go to wherever you consume podcasts. If you're not, if you're confused about where you consume podcasts, Google, where do I consume podcasts? And you'll get places like uh, Spotify and SoundCloud and, and iTunes and Google Podcasts. If, if this episode goes out, before they shut it down. And I like Google Podcasts. I don't know why they're shutting that down. Anyway, you can also find the SEO Rant at the SEO Rant.com, at SEO Rant on Twitter, also known as X, if you're a loser. Um, I shouldn't say that. Some people call it X. I still call it Twitter. So we're there as well. Uh, new episodes come out Thursday, Friday, usually Thursday, sometimes Fridays. It all depends on how busy my week is. So it does make sense to subscribe to the affirmation places where you can consume a podcast, which again, if you don't know where that is, Google it. For your listening pleasure today, she is the founder. Ooh, we have a founder. I haven't had a founder in a, in a long time. Let me, let me, let me, let me build this up. We have the founder of an SEO agency. We have the founder of Missive Digital, an SEO agency founded by Himani Kankaria. Welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, I'm doing really great. Thank you so much, Mori. That's wonderful introduction that you built. I, how did you start your own agency? How did that happen? Oh, okay. So initially it was like that, you know, uh, before coming to agency, I was uh, a consultant uh, for like, say, three to four years. And before that, I uh, worked in-house for a couple of agencies and corporates here in India. So uh, it happened during COVID and uh, before COVID, it was like that, you know, being a consultant, you are the face of the organization, right? You are hunting for the agencies outside. And uh, when you uh, communicate with the agencies, you know, I was like uh, able to find that there are companies who come up with packaged style, uh, you know, commercials and the offerings. And in that case, what used to happen is that, you know, uh, they used to sell in that, you know, uh, if you want to target 15 keywords, this is going to uh, be some kind of charges. If you want to target 40 keywords, uh, you know, this would be some kind of process and uh, the commercials, right? So uh, it was very uh, difficult for me to understand their offerings and, you know, how they pro process in a way where, you know, uh, uh, when you have to target, say, 40 commercial keywords, you have to focus on many other and you know a lot of keywords as well you know yep. those information and many other so at that point in time i was not able to understand that you know how they are going to work for my clients so i used to reject the proposals that i used to get and my clients used to laugh at me that himani it is going to be very very difficult for you to get uh, the right kind of agency that you need right so uh, yeah, I, I also used to laugh it out. And then during COVID, I used to got a lot of inquiries and uh, my husband, uh, you know, during lockdown, he was sitting beside me. He could not, couldn't take it as a business owner that how you can say no to a, you know, a customer who is willing to, you know, come uh, and work with yeah. you and your team, right? So at that point in time, we started, uh, you know, having a team and that's how we started. Wow, that's amazing. Super cool. All right, so if you're in need of some SEO, check out Missive Digital. We'll link to the to the URL in the, uh, in the show notes. Um, before we get started, before the madness begins, this episode of the SEO Rant is sponsored by SEMrush. SEMrush is a leading online visibility management SaaS platform that enables businesses globally to run search engine optimization, pay-per-click content, social media, and competitive research campaigns and get measurable results from online marketing. SEMrush offers insights and solutions for companies to build, manage, and measure campaigns across various marketing channels. With that, let's get into this week's channel. We're tuning into content strategy, mistakes, myths, and other shenanigans. Where do you want to start with this? Because I have a lot to say about how poorly SEOs handle content and a lot of the nonsense that we do. But I don't want to pull a virgin alligator party on anybody. So let's start with where you're at. What are you thinking about content strategy, mistakes, and myths? 
oh my god there are so many it becomes that you know this podcast can go on and on and we'll be short of uh, you know say time. i think we can only take we only have time for the first 1000 absolutely so i believe that you know when it comes to uh, the number one mistake that happens is that you know uh, with seos especially that whenever we target uh, say content creation we just look at keywords right we only think of that you know what all keywords we are going to drive uh, traffic for and for that reason we strategize we come up with topics that actually focus on they are focused on keywords and um, why it is a mistake because number one thing that we miss out is the audience here right it has to be first focused on the audience and not on the keywords we agree that you know we have to you know get traffic onto the website so fast so that you know we uh, our clients are happy and when our clients are happy we are happy right so we have to focus on queries but then of course our first focus should be whether our target audience is searching for those queries or not what if they are not searching for those queries right so the biggest mistake i would say and you know uh, this is something that you know that this gets lost very easily because uh, target audience can be different right it can be the decision makers it can be influencers it could be investors many other right so depending on the business the industry and whom you want to target in the first 3 months or the 6 months that's how the content strategy needs to be planned for your target audience yeah I mean, I don't know where to where to start with this. I mean, like there's a whole okay, keyword research is great. I and people will disagree with me on this. I think a lot of traditional SEOs would disagree with me on this. I look at keyword research as like the like the beginning point of like getting familiar with a topic that I'm not familiar with. Like if I'm familiar with a topic, yeah, I don't I don't need no keyword research. I I already know what my audience is looking for. I know what they're not looking for. I know what search terms or what what topics rather are 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 popular and are going to get searched for. I don't need a tool to tell me that. Sorry to our sponsor Senrush. However, okay. if I'm in breaking into a new niche and I'm trying to figure out like what are the topics, what are the things that people are talking about, keyword research can give me a clue that I can now use and go search for those terms and get a better sense because sometimes I find you go through like say semrush and you again our sponsor of this podcast uh there i'm milking this you're getting your money's worth semrush in this episode um i'll look at the keywords that they that they offer some of the questions some of the terms and then i'll start googling them and i'll start looking at not what's ranking i'm sorry rephrase that not what the keyword is what's ranking because sometimes Sometimes for a keyword that seems very straightforward and very whatever, it's like, you know, simple, the content's actually dealing with a different topic. And Google right. has nothing else to rank and that's what it's ranking instead and the content doesn't actually align, which is a red flag. That's a red yes. flag that maybe the actual audience isn't actually interested in, in that keyword if all the other publishers are targeting something else, there's two possibilities. I know something they don't know or they know something I don't know. yeah absolutely very very spot on uh, you know on that because most of the time whenever we have written content for search engine journal and even you know we have seen a lot of uh, blogs getting published on wix and on semrush and all of those uh, you know very uh, good websites we have seen that the content which is less searched about but most talked about they gra- grab the most int- attention yeah. right and even like now it's like that you know even if you want to say uh, you know improve your index saying of course you need a couple of content that gets more popularity on social media right so once that gets in you get better traffic of course yeah and that's another thing sometimes you're not writing for an seo audience sometimes you should be writing for a social audience if you're a new website i would start writing for a social audience getting some traction getting some cadence getting some momentum getting some digital light going and 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 start from there and then take and then start writing your evergreen pieces that you're trying to rank for because you're, if you're starting out you're not going to rank for them to begin with you got to get some some momentum going so write for social first exactly exactly so you know most of the challenges that you know they just come up with the keywords that you know the tools provide and not just go beyond uh, you know that and uh, like one thing is good that okay uh, targeting keywords is sometimes good but then at least focusing audience becomes the most, most important thing yeah you know what can help you understand what your audience is actually looking for also asked 
also ask polls and data from people also ask, which are actual questions that people are actually asking. Also ask minds and organizes. People also ask data in real time, showing you the next most likely question your searchers are going to ask. Best of all, it's completely free to try, and you don't even need to create an account because Mark's not after your wallet like other companies are. Also Ask has the world's only API for people also ask data, meaning you can combine this data directly with AI tools such as ChatGPT to supercharge your content briefs and write great content at scale. Go to AlsoAsk.com and use code SEO rent to get 10% off. Okay, I'm done earning money with, on this show. We're good to go. Done. But it's true. Sometimes I'll, I'll use also ask, and I'm not saying because like they're sponsoring. I use also ask not to say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target this question that people also ask box. But what I'll do is I'll look at all of the questions and be like, hey, what are the themes that my audience is looking for and write content to address those themes? Exactly. And I guess uh, uh, that is something where you actually get the real problem that the users have, right? That what exactly that they want to read. Right. Because there can be many uh, questions and, you know, the topics that these, you know, uh, tools give us is that, you know, they might be kind of FAQs. Right. And it can be, uh, you know, combined into a similar theme or, a, you know, say any of uh, maybe a uh, hub content or you subdivide it into the spoke contents. Yeah, there's the, the content. OK, I don't want to go down to the I can, I'm, I'm about to go down this rabbit hole more, but let's not. Let's go. OK, next myth. What else we got? Oh my. OK, so I guess uh, very, I would say if I talk about that myth, it's like, you know, people confuse with content strategy and content marketing. Uh, it's yes. that, you know, content marketing is exactly the same as content strategy. To be very honest, it's very, very different, very different. You know, marketing is all about that, you know, how you are going to distribute the content, yes. right? And when it comes to content strategy, how are, how are you going to build it? Correct. Right? With, what kind of uh, topics are you going to focus on? What type of format the content would be in? Whether it would be video, audio, blogs, you know, landing pages, what? Right. So, you know, the type of content, the content strategy includes that how the content should be framed, who the audience should be, that, you know, what type of uh, same uh, approach you are going to take in the content, what they are going to read why, or listen. And, you know, uh, how are we going to even distribute? So content marketing becomes a part of content strategy. Yeah. So distribution a of... is a subset. Yeah, I, I find that too often the content marketing dictates the strategy. Right. So yeah. we're so worried about the distribution that we don't worry about the actual content strategy. Like if I would first, it's just me, focus on the content strategy, because I find that content strategy aligns very much with your overall brand positioning and your brand messaging, which I think is Absolutely. the fundamentals of content strategy. Because guess what? Here's a hot take for you. Not It's not only the graphics and the visual design that tell your audience who you are as a brand. It's actually the words you write. Words 100%. matter. 100%. And the emotions hidden in the words matter yes. even. All of the latent, all of the unconscious associations, all of the things that you're, you're, all of the body language that you're signaling with the word choice that you use and how you frame those words. It's very difficult to be very sensitive to it. And I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't dictate that because you're worried about like distributing it on TikTok. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's like even uh, we, have, we have started seeing, right, that, you know, whenever you create a content for, say, SEO and then you start using it for social media, repurpose it and, you know, you make sure that it reaches to your audience and every targeted platforms. So, you know, they confuse that, OK, uh, uh, this SEO strategy or the content marketing strategy works on all the platforms, but that's not content marketing. Content marketing is just the distribution part of it. But when you decided, you know, what you need to write upon is or, you know, you uh, what what kind type of content you need to create that is what entirely the content strategy is all about I, I, I'll, I, as like a proof i guess that people don't focus on enough you'll often see people describe themselves as content marketers and you'll very rarely see people describe themselves as content strategists right absolutely big problem okay myth number two we got one more oh yes absolutely okay let's do it <laughs> and by the way you can't see this because it's an audio experience, but you know, if you're on zoom and you put up like certain fingers, like whatever, and the book, like you get like different uh, visual graphics. I just put up my, oh, yeah. my, my number one finger and the balloon started going off. 
Yeah. It's so random. Like, oh. you, yeah. It's so <laughs> random. I don't even know what it is that triggers it. And you're in a meeting. There we go. With like serious people. And you hold up your fingers. All of a sudden balloons start going up. Who would Zoom thought this was a good idea? True. I got, true, I got a finger for them. <laughs> and it starts creating, you know, those feelings. Yeah. But I don't want feelings. I don't want happy <laughs> balloons right now. <laughs> Anyway, okay, myth number Amazing. three. Amazing. Okay, so I guess uh, another myth would be that uh, content strategy is once done and you don't need to touch it. Set it and forget it. Yes, that's, <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> yeah, don't set it and they, forget it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they confuse it so often with content marketing. And with that, this goes without saying that, okay, we are done. I mean, we have identified the topics that we want to create. Okay, uh, so there is a hidden myth over here as well that people easily confuses that content strategy is identifying content topics. Right. So, you know, once you have identified the topics, like say 50, 60 articles that you need to write upon for one uh, service or product feature, you're done. I mean, that's not it is. It's all about more than the topics. And it is more about that. You, it's a continuous evolving process. It should change. It should evolve based on the performance that is happening on how you have decided and how you have planned. Yeah. I I find in general like with, the, with content strategy and positioning that one thing should put you in a position to do the next thing. It should flow pretty logically. Like, we did this, right. this worked. Now we're in a position to do the, you know, X, Y, and Z because of what we did and because of how well it worked or how well it didn't work. We can now naturally, you should have a natural roadmap start to develop as you perform yeah. and as you start putting things out there. It should kind of lead this thing naturally to the next thing. And if you're, right. and if you're, if you don't, as a rule, I mean, sometimes it happens, you just don't. But as a rule, it means it's like there's something wrong, like something you're out of touch somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And if here, you know, even I would like to add one more mistake that happens is that, you know, when someone starts creating content strategy and all of those things, they start to think that, you know, it's all about the bof BOFU content, you know, bottom of the funnel content. Yeah. So it's all about that, you know, looking at conversions as the only KPI. Oh. <laughs> KPIs are a dirty word. I was so going to say that. It's like Sorry? KPIs are a dirty word. Oh, yes, absolutely. It triggers a lot of emotions and a lot of emotions. A lot of other pain yeah, as well. It's ridiculous. People get so obsessed about the KPIs. And like, it's like it's like not seeing the forest for the woods or the trees. I forgot the phrase, whatever it is. But like you're looking at like your eyes are right up against the wall and you don't see like the broader picture because you're so focused on the stupid KPIs. Oh my God. So many. So many good marketing strategies go down the tube because you're overly focused on the KPIs at the wrong time. Yeah, that's right. And even a lot of uh, those, you know, KPIs that are not even important for a business to be focused on. You know, we come from a, a you know, a industry where we focus on B2B SaaS and tech companies, right? As our clients, majority of the clients are into that space. And we see that, you know, whenever we plan, uh, you know, the entire say month or a quarter uh, for them, what happens is that, you know, uh, we try and miss out on the KPIs that would actually bring more visibility, that would bring more engagement, and uh, that would also bring some, you know, uh, I would say, uh, outperforming their competitors as well. So these are a couple of, even when, you know, uh, we do uh, influencer marketing as well for SaaS companies and all of those. So there even I remember Nicole from SEMrush, right? What she said is Lovely. that, you know, uh, uh, it's not about when you deal with influencers. It's not that you see as the number of likes, comments, or shares that you're getting on social media mentions. It's rather how much valuable people are actually interacting with them. Yeah. Okay. So I used to work with Nicola Sunrush. We were on the same team together. We have many, many conversations about this very topic. Right. And she's wonderful. You should follow her. I'll we'll link to the article in the uh, article, her uh, our profile in uh, in the show notes. But um, I think what happens is, and influencer marketing is a good example of this, where you're looking at the immediate KPIs, like the number of of 
shares and likes that their their promotion gave you and the number of clicks that the URL they shared got to your site, all that kind of stuff. And you're not looking at the long-term potential because you're too focused on the immediate metrics. And right. what you're not looking at is the sense, the association. Like I personally, as my influencer marketing strategy would be, use the same influencer over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm breaking the fourth wall here a little bit. People don't do that. What they generally do is, oh, we'll get this influencer. They have 100,000 followers. I'm going to get a different one. And they have 200,000 followers. I'm going to get all our audience will be so huge from all the influencers sharing. But what I think you want to do with influencer marketing is create an association between that influencer and the brand. I say Michael Jordan, you say Nike. Right. right. That's Absolutely. what you want. You don't want the number of shoes he sold. That That's a net result of that. That's an outcome. But the goal yeah. is the KPI in my mind is how associated, how tightly associated is the influencer with the brand. And that mm -hmm. only happens with consistency. It only happens if you take an organic approach to them where you have a natural, normal, organic relationship, a real relationship with that influencer. You can't put lipstick on a pig. You can't fake it till you make it with an influence. You actually have to be I put friends with them in a, to a certain extent. Yeah, you have to bond with them. I mean, yeah. they should have trust. They should believe in your product. They should believe in the brand. And that's how organically they can help. Because uh, most of the time, as you said, that, you know, when they start looking at the, how many shoes you've sell, uh, you know, uh, you've sold in, uh, say, one post. But that is a short-term goal, right? The Very short-term. Attach, didn't get attached with the brand. They have not put their whole heart and soul. Why? Because they have less information, less connect with the brand yet, right? So you will get sales for one time, but what about every time that you are going to associate with them? Look, right? let's so use maybe Nike. Get it. Yeah. Like, let's use Nike as an example. Okay. When yeah. Nike, if you watch the movie Air, which is a great movie, they couldn't sign anyone. No one wanted to, no basketball player wanted to be part of Nike. They, Nike was not known for being a basketball shoe, was known for being a running shoe. After right. they got Michael Jordan, forget forget all of the sneakers that he sold and forget all this stuff. How many other NBA stars took on Nike because of that, right? Yes. I just did fireworks now with my thumb. This this thing is ridiculous, <laughs> Zoom. I just put my thumbs up and I got fireworks. How many other NBA stars said, you know, Michael Jordan's with, with Nike? Oh, you know what? Like, let me also check out Nike. So forget right. the, the direct number of shoes that Jordan sold. Look at, there would be no Kobe Bryant pushing Nike. There would be no Shaquille O'Neal pushing Nike if Michael Jordan didn't join up with the brand. What influencers do, and I feel it's the same thing with content, you can apply the same thing with actual content itself, is it opens up new doors that you didn't even expect to find. And those new doors can provide unbelievable amount of value to your brand and to your bottom line, but it's very indirect. 100%. And I think there is one, uh, you know, uh, problem with uh, the process as well, because the companies, the, you know, the top management at the companies least understand that, you know, the game is actually about the long term game, right? It's not something that you are going to put money together today, and you need the ROI right, like right now, right? So that's something that, you know, even uh, these people are getting pressures from the top management that, okay, we need this much sales, you know, you do whatever it takes. And that's how, you know, they sometimes miss out the actual value because uh, the, as we said, that content strategy is about positioning your brand, right? That how the brand is going to be positioned in the market. In that case, of course, it cannot happen in one month, one year, or say two years. It happens over a period of time. Yeah, and, and that helps you to distribute, okay? If you don't have that brand buy-in, you don't have that brand cachet, you don't have that brand awareness, you don't have that, 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 that positive association and sentiment towards the brand, you don't get shares, yeah. you don't get clicks. All of the content marketing KPIs that you're looking for come about, in my honest opinion, through brand building. Brand building is like, it's not even planting the seed. And I put content strategy as part of brand building. It's, it's plowing the field so that you could eventually plant a seed, but you can't plant exactly. the seed and it can't grow, which is the content marketing side of it until you actually, you know, rip up the ground and make the soil fertile enough that you can actually plant that seed. We're going full farming on this show. By the way, I know that's nothing right. about farming. <laughs> but that's the best example. I would say that, you know, that, that relates too much. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, before I go too far down a farming wormhole, which I would just be purely making things up, like the closest thing I've done to farming is like planting a sunflower seed in my garden. Wow. Yeah, it's great. Died real oh, quick. <laughs> Did not make it. My wife planted one in a, in a pot. That one made it. That was good. Also, how do you get sunflower seeds? Where do they come from? I've never seen that before. Like, no the, idea. Yeah, like I'm like, where are the seeds? I want to eat the <laughs> seeds, but I saw no <laughs> seeds, and that's all I know about farming. Hemani, where can people find you? Uh, okay, so uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at uh, Hemani underscore Kankaria K A N K A R I A. And you guys can also find me on Google, search my name on Google and even on LinkedIn. Ooh, but not on TikTok. <laughs> so I would say it's Himani Gankarya everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, but you, you are on TikTok. Um, no. India no. has that. <laughs> I ask every guest, if you listen to the show, you're like, yep, this is the part in time where Morty has, like, are you on TikTok? And inevitably every guest says, nope. <laughs> so if you're doing... <laughs> If you're doing market research for where are real marketers at, they're not on TikTok. Oh, I've actually it? used this. Oh. Say that. I mean, is it? I mean, I saw Crystal very active on uh, TikTok. On TikTok. I saw TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like that's like a Wix thing. Like they're trying to get this stuff on TikTok, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. I, there's not been a single, maybe, maybe I'm getting it wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there's not been a single, I've done a hundred and something episodes of this podcast. There's not been a single person. Yeah, I'm I'm active on TikTok. Maybe I have an account, but like I'm thinking about it maybe, but no one's actually on TikTok. I've actually used that at Wix. I'm like, hey, y'all, you want to like target marketers? I d don't use the TikTok because I I talk to them all the time and I've asked on 100 episodes and no oh, one wow. said yes. My God. I mean, people we're... started using threads as well, but now even, you know, nobody No, I mean, none of the marketers are that active. I mean, initially John was also active, John Mueller on threads, right. but I guess even not now. I believe. Nah, that, that there's Mastodon, whatever. I don't know. But like, <laughs> anyway, we'll link to your profiles in the show notes. If you're looking for the SEO rant, check us out each and every Thursday or possibly Friday on Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever great and terrible, and even mediocre podcasts are found. We're also there at SEO Rant on Twitter, theseorant.com. Give us some traffic, link to us, make sure the follow links. If I don't want I don't want your no follow links or meaningless to me. And I want to build a high DA. And with that, thank you, Humani, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Marty. It was really wonderful. It was a lot of fun. And to the audience, toodles. <laughs>